Commutify presents Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Each week, we explore the challenging issues transportation demand management professionals face on their journey to transition commuters from driving alone to more sustainable, shared and active commuting habits. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify. This is Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Hi, everyone, and welcome aboard to this week's episode of Between the Lines. I'm Andy Keaton, and today we are talking with Olivia Holden. Olivia works as a program director uh, to expand travel options programs and policy initiatives at Commute Seattle in Seattle, Washington. And she's also the vice chair of the TMA Council with ACT, uh, and her passion is breaking down barriers to public systems. And I really like this about the bio you sent over, uh, Olivia. She gets around town by e-bike, bus, and foot. I think that's great. I, too, um, get around town pretty much by the same way. Um, so different town, but same, same mode. And today we are talking about the TMA Council at ACT as part of this ACT Council Spotlight mini-series we're doing. This is our fifth installment. But first, thanks for being on, Olivia. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And like I said, we're talking about the TMA Council. Um, you know, I was originally going to ask you what the TMA Council is, but maybe we first should actually define what a TMA is. Uh, most yeah. people listening probably have maybe heard of it, um, but just so we're all speaking the same language. Can you tell us what is a TMA? Yeah, awesome. Let's start there. That's great. So transportation management associations or organizations, you can be a TMA or a TMO. Um, at the end of the day, we're nonprofit organizations and we are dedicated to making it easier for people to walk, bike, ride, roll, whatever that may be to work or school. And we value access and affordability and really climate friendly travel options. And uh, TMAs work together with public agencies, transportation service providers, mobility service providers, and we, we can't really achieve our missions alone. Um, so it takes a village of those stakeholders and community members, employers, and local businesses and policy and decision makers to make our missions of having people have affordable travel options to get to school and work possible. Um, so that's what TMAs do. We're here for the people. We make it a little bit easier to get around town wherever that may be you're going. And yeah, when I first kind of started in the TDM, Transportation Demand Management, another, another acronym, um, when I started in the TDM space, I, I didn't really know what TMAs were. Um, since then, I've come to like really appreciate what you all do at, T at T the TMA or TMO um, level. It's been, I mean, any community with the TMA or TMO is better off for it. And so I'm really excited to have you on uh, to talk about the TMA Council because you're doing great things for TMAs as well. Um, can you tell me what is the TMA Council and yeah. who is it for? It's kind of self-explanatory, maybe in the name, but from sure. your own words. Of course, yeah. So the TMA Council, we're for TMAs. So we're a council as a part of the Association for Commuter Transportation. We're a group of volunteers that have come together to make it easier for professionals to get best practices and share knowledge and find their peers among similar organizations. Um, TMAs are, or the TMA Council is typically made up of TMA professionals or folks from research firms. We have folks in our council from mobility service providers and different employers on, on the call um, or on the, on the council there. Um, and often really public transit agency staff or folks from a, a DOT are also on the council as well. We are a big group of conveners and so that's what the TMA Council is made up of. Um, we bring people together to be able to pilot these new and creative ideas and, and solve the most wicked problems that we have in front of us too. That's awesome. And we're gonna get into a little bit more in just a second about what your what's actually going on in the council. Um, but taking a step back to TMAs as a whole, um, I know we kind of touched on this at the beginning, um, but why do you think TMAs are so important to the future of commuting or maybe transportation as a whole? Yeah, I mean, transportation is, it's the largest household cost aside from housing. 
And TMAs are so important because we make transportation and getting around town, those, those choices that people make more affordable and, and we bring some time back into their lives as well. So that's what the future of commuting and the future of travel is all about is choices and options. And after all of this, this telework that we've been doing, giving time people, giving people time back is exactly what they're asking for. And that's why we are so important and critical for, for the future as well. Um, we also really ensure that people are getting the best employer benefit that they could be getting for their, for their commute possible. So we make sure that employers are giving folks subsidized or, or free transit passes in their pockets to make it not only easy for them to get to work, but also the other, other trips that they're making to the store or to childcare or wherever that may be. Um, it's, it's not just to get to work that transit pass, it's, it's a lifestyle benefit, just like your healthcare or your 401k. Um, we also advocate at TMAs and at the TMA Council at large um, for capital investment in more funding options for programs like Safe Route to School, Vision Zero, 15-minute transit service, youth transit passes, and more. Um, at the end of the day, we're here to make people's lives just a bit more joyful and to bring some money and dollars back to their communities to make, make their lives a little bit better. So you, we could say TMAs and TMOs are kind of like the... Uh you know, behind the scenes, making everything work, anything good that's ever happened to you in transportation, it's because of you. <laughs> I mean, you could say that. We're definitely, if you've got a TMA or, or a group of folks that love love travel options, even in your community, um, give them some credit. They're definitely making your lives a little bit better in some small or, or maybe even a really large way at the end of the day, too. And I know there's one thing that, um, a program that you have worked really hard on uh, alongside a lot of other stakeholders um, in the Seattle region. I, I think, you know, we were talking beforehand, we'll probably make a full episode out of this because it's a really sure. cool program, but maybe now is a good time just to touch on as a, you know, an example of what TMAs are really doing. Um, touch yeah. on that youth transit pass program that's, that's launching soon in Seattle. Yeah, of, of course. And so, when I was a kid, I got around town by my mom or my dad driving me everywhere. Um, I had my bike in my neighborhood, but there wasn't a bike lane or a good place for me to ride. So I took a walkie talkie with me to be able to, to, you know, call back my mom whenever I got to the neighbors. Uh, but mostly I had to rely on my mom or my grandma even over the summers to get around where I needed to go. And that was, that was really true into my teenage years when I could have been more independent. And so I, moved to a really dense place. I moved out west, out west um, to Seattle and I have so many options at my fingertips and so do all of the kids in my neighborhood too. And their lives go a lot farther because they get a free Orca card or a free transit pass um, here citywide at Seattle and they have for the last couple of years here. And throughout the summer, I see groups of kids with their skateboards heading across town to go to the best skate park that Seattle has to offer because that bus can take them there. And in a lot of ways on a one seat ride, they're not even making a transfer. Like, how great is that? Uh, um, and this this September, King County, so countywide, including much, much more um, communities here in the in the Puget Sound region, including Bellevue and Redmond and, and many other places, Shoreline, Burien, um, folks in King County, that, that transit pass for youth is going to expand for folks um, 18 and under here in September. And, and that's incredible. Like we're, we're making a lot of strides towards giving, towards a, a really a free transit pass system here in Seattle, whether or not you're getting that from your employer or, or now um, for, for a youth pass. And so I'm so excited because so many families are gonna be on the bus riding together getting to the store and we're building travel behavior that we want to see now and into the future. And when your kid asks you to do something like you go and, and do it. And so the more ta children, the more children we have out there being like, mom, dad, why don't you take the bus? You know, it's just a mile or, or the bus comes every 10 minutes, like the better and the sooner we'll have great, great travel behavior and making strides towards climate friendly travel behavior. Like, this is a big revolution that we're going to have at our fingertips here. And I, I am so excited about it and obviously could talk about it for a long time. So I'm really looking forward to the new podcast talking about that specifically and how other communities can replicate it here in the U S and North America and worldwide. I love the idea of using, using kids to also influence adults behavior. Um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, and certainly creating those those good sustainable habits from a young age 
Um, definitely we'll do an episode on this because I think it's super important, really interesting. Want to dive much more deeply into the program there uh, in the Puget Sound area. So stay tuned, everyone listening or watching. Mm -hmm. It will be coming. Um, and Olivia, keep an eye on your email because I'll be reaching out. Um, so let's get back to the, the topic at hand here today. Uh, going back to the TMA Council, we mentioned um, you know, why our TMA is important. We talked a little bit about the TMA Council. Um, what is it that you are planning as a council um, to help people, uh, professionals, whether they are TMA professionals themselves or um, you know, work tangentially with TMAs? How are you uh, planning to support them um, moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. And so the biggest way that the TMA Council helps support communities and, and professionals across the nation is by helping them create TMAs in their communities themselves, starting those from the ground up. We help advocate also for TDM policy at those communities, which often will spur a TMA or, or the vice versa. If you have a TMA advocating your community, you're going to get policy eventually. Um, those are the two biggest ways that we help make change and, and how we're leveraging TMAs to be able to make our mission and our values go farther. Um, a good example of that is with the Greater Valley Forage or GVF over in the Philadelphia region. Philly themselves are King of Prussia there. They don't have a policy, but they were able to help as a TMA advocate for a smaller community to get TDM legislation in city code, um, which is a first. It's a first for Pennsylvania. If don't quote me maybe, but I'm, I'm pretty positive <laughs> there. Um, they don't have really progressive TDM policy and Maureen over Maureen Farrell over at GBF has done wonders in advocating and the TMA council has played a role in supporting her, making her legislation and, and research go farther and connecting her with the people that she needs to talk to, whether that's policy decision makers, government officials, or different folks from DOTs that have put council measures together and have gotten them approved. How did it work for them and what can they replicate and borrow? Um, we also offer amazing mentorship through the TMA Council. So it's a group of about 250 to 300 professionals at any given time that come together on a quarterly basis and, and really celebrate during the international conference as well together in person um, and offer mentorship. And so I've met some wonderful people, um, including Julia through, through the TMA Council Chair who have made my network and my connections go a lot farther as well. So um, those are three great things. And I think the big other thing is just helping other TMAs and other communities get more funding and more support. So the TMA Council has a boatload of resources. We have a really long TMA handbook that we're working to update. So that's the, probably the most tangible thing that I could tell you too that we're working on together. And we need some support too. So reach out to me. We're looking to put it into layout here in the next couple of weeks to bring it to the international conference. Um, but we need more money and we need more dollars to make our services and programs go farther. And a lot of that spurs from policy, but also just making the ask. And so we're here to help with that ask and, and putting that at the table too. And I, I love that support system. Uh, I've been to a couple TMA council meetings over the years and always really good conversation. And I think, um, maybe even more than some of the other councils because it's such a you know tight-knit community um, really working on a specific uh, idea kind of together across the country. Um, the conversation is great and the support between people and one person saying, hey, I'm looking to do this. Has anyone else done this? And then there's you know multiple hands going up. And uh, I really like to see that. And the, the TMA handbook as well is amazing. Um, so excited to see the the, you know, updated version coming out as well. Yeah. Cool. And I think this episode is going to be coming out probably right after the uh, international conference. We're recording it before. Um, so hopefully everyone will have enjoyed the conference um, and are trying to figure out ways to continue to get involved in the TMA council. Seems like a great option. Um, so that was my pitch for the TMA council. Uh, which sometimes I do this, I just get into, wow, this is great. You've convinced me. I'm going to convince everyone else. But can you convince everyone or can you just give us your pitch of, of why should someone who's not currently in the council join the TMA council? Or maybe even we have some listeners who aren't a part of the Association for Commuter Transportation. You know, why should they join that organization um, as a whole as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. So ACTOR, the Association for Community Transportation, is the biggest community of people working in TDM in the country, in North America, and probably worldwide. We are a fun group of folks that are really driven by change. And so if you're looking to get something accomplished, ACT is a place for you. Um, there's a role for you to play in how we do our, our business and, and also implement what types of offerings we have. ACT is full of communities and chapters and board opportunities and leadership opportunities that a lot of other associations or professional organizations don't have or um, aren't really as accessible um, in terms of affordability and cost too for, for, for a lot of professionals as well. And the TMA Council itself is, like I said, we're like two to 300 folks that come together to be able to make TMAs a little bit more accessible to different communities. And so we help people start TMAs we are helping people create policy to have language in place to make their communities more competitive to receive funding at the, at the table. Um, and we're creating the TDM professionals of the future too. So we have a really diverse group of folks that are not just from the nonprofit or TMA sector, we're from the private sector, public sector, and that's a great area to learn from too. There's so many great resources at the table and the TMA council is here to help make things a bit more strategic and a bit more creative um, and make your, your mission of what you're trying to do at your organization go, go much farther too. Um, if you've learned anything from, from this podcast today, you probably have learned that you can't do it alone um, and that there are so many people working towards a similar, similar goal. And so it might be a little different on how you get there and that path that you choose to get there. But if you're working towards the same goal, I believe that we can all, we can all get there together. And that's what the TMA Council is. We're a, a big community of folks that are going to help you achieve your goals, whether that's personal or organizational or, or professional goals. Uh, much better pitch than mine. Uh, this is why you're the you're the professional here. Um, you're the expert. This sounds, I mean, yeah, really exciting um, to see to continue to see the TMA Council grow. To continue to see more TMAs hopefully be formed around uh, the country, or you know, even expanding um, throughout North America. So, I'll definitely be keeping my eye on the on the council. Um, and hopefully, anyone who's listening, if they'd like to join, I assume they can reach out to you. Of course. Um, or someone else from leadership to learn a little bit more. Of course. Yes, absolutely. Great. So last question. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. Um, during this, this Act Council Spotlight mini series, uh, we've been asking everyone to, you know, take out the crystal balls, do a little predicting of the future. Um, so it's your turn now. Uh, where do you see the future of TMAs to be? Yeah. So at Commute Seattle, we have a goal to have one out of four trips in Seattle to be by travel options, by, by biking, walking, transit, rolling, whatever that may be, just not driving alone to get to work. And we achieved that goal. And that was, you know, a peak hour goal between 6 to 9 a.m. We wanted to see folks taking travel options to get to work. Where we've moved since then is an all trips goal um, for folks. And that's where I see the TMA industry moving. It's very common for TMAs to, to approach just commute and just for, for folks to get to work and have a completely employer based program and, and organization. And at Commute Seattle, we've, we've embarked on a pretty hefty strategic planning process and um, we're in what we're calling phase two of that right now. Um, and we're developing metrics and goals and, and North Stars to where we're going. And what we want to see is, is an all trips model. We know that trips here in Seattle, um, like 90% of them are under a mile and 90% of driving trips are under a mile. And that's the easiest thing that we can solve. We can help people connect with their community and their neighborhood by walking and biking and making those trips um, in a climate friendly way. And that's what we're going to make our mission to be at Commute Seattle is to not only approach how you're getting to work or to school, but how you're making those short term and local trips in and around your community and how you're getting your kids to school or how they're getting to their activities too. And that's why our programs like for youth transit passes are so critical to our mission and, and where we're heading and where I see the future of TMA is really dedicating and providing the most the most benefit for their community is by approaching all trips and, and not just those commute trips 
um, and including telework in those goals too. Telework is going to help us get a lot farther um, and it, it definitely is eliminating a trip at the end of the day. Um, and so those for those that can access telework, that's amazing. But the rest of us also need some other options to be able to get around town too. Um, it's big for sports, big for events, um, big for economic development. And so thinking outside of the commute would be my, my biggest tip for you all listening in today. I like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And I, you know, thanks again to you and to everyone else who's uh, working for these TMAs and TMOs around the country, because the work you do is so important to the mobility system and to the, you know, uh, all trips, multimodal, uh, you know, future that we're all hoping to, to see. So this has been a great episode. Big takeaway, join the TMA council. Um, secondary takeaway, if you have kids, move to Seattle and then they can get free transit. Amazing. Uh, yes. <laughs> but thanks again to everyone who's been listening or watching this episode. If you haven't yet, make sure you go and subscribe to our email list at betweenthelines.io. Uh, and that way you can get an email every time we have a new episode and just follow along with the conversation a bit more. Um, and make sure you give us a like, a follow, a rating, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, and check out the video on YouTube or Spotify if you haven't yet. Olivia, thanks again for being on. We will see you or a colleague of yours soon to talk about those youth transit passes uh, in the Seattle area. This has been a great conversation. And uh, like I said, excited to see the TMA Council continue to grow. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to being back soon. I'll see you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify.